If you're not in tomorrow night, but you're near a telly, it just gives you a mobile number. Right, many years ago, um, I interviewed Kenneth Williams for Yorkshire Television. I just remember what it was for, actually. He'd written a book called Acid Drops. Yeah, he did. It's his letters, it's... collection of letters yeah. in the early 1980s. Uh, he was actually he was a last-minute guest on the programme I was doing, and I had to wing it with absolutely no research. But it didn't matter. I asked him one question, and he was off, giving a ten-minute non-stop monologue that had the whole studio in stitches. But as tonight's drama documentary about Kenneth Williams shows, the private man was a horse of a very different colour. Person trying to get his rest up here. Hello, Kenny, my old poster. Oh, yes. <laughs> How are you doing? Same as usual, doing it alone by myself, tragic and all. How's that owl of yours coming along? Nearly done with it, have you? Oh, uh, nearly done. Should be off tonight. Really? Well, you could have fooled me. Positively massive it is. Well, if you need any help filling it, your owl, that is, give me a bell. <laughs> Turn on, mate! <laughs> Plebeians. Expecting me to behave like that is positively a disgrace. And with us now, Barry Cryer, who worked very closely with Kenneth Williams for many years, and David Benson, who's based his own ten-year career on, on his hero. Do, doing what exactly, David? You, you're, you're him. I do a, a one-man show. I have several one-man shows, but the first one I did ten years ago now was about Kenneth Williams and uh, what he was what it might have been like to actually meet him. The show isn't really about his career as much as about what he was like as a person. Well, OK, supposing right. you're him now, and I, uh, and I were to ask, because I have interviewed him, and I were to ask him a question, say, Kenneth, you've seen some of this drama documentary about you tonight. Um, is it accurate? Were you, th were you this very private, um, serious-minded person? In the the no, it's absolutely his grace. <laughs> really, the cheek of it, really. I mean, it's all based, you see, on the diaries, you know. And that's <laughs> only one side, isn't it, Barry? Yes. It's a yes, you see, it's, all, it's only one side. <laughs> There's another side you see, and there's more to be said. But, um, very good. he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's very good. I have to fill it. Yeah, him. sadly. Well, Barry, you work with him um, yeah. a lot. Well, it, it was mainly radio. I was the. Uh, the inner circle and what he would have made of that line. Uh, that wasn't the inner circle. <laughs> of uh, I think David Bemmer, he was the most solitary man I ever knew, but uh, he was great fun to be with while it was happening, and then he'd go right. home and write his diaries. Yeah. So, so you never so knew what he was really thinking. Did he slag he you off in the diaries? Pardon? Did, did he slag you off in the diaries? I can't remember. No, no, no I didn't you, get a mention. I was rather hurt. Really. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't get a slag off in the diaries. So <laughs> after the radio show, say, just a minute or something, was finished, you... He wouldn't sort of go, I don't know what you do after those shows anyway, but I mean, if you were all going for a drink or a meal or something, yeah. he wouldn't join in. Oh, no, not, not in no. my experience. Mm. Yes, yes, he would. He also liked to catch cigarettes off me for him and his mum to annoy Clement Freud. <laughs> because Clement Freud hates people puffing smoking. Yes, Absolutely. exactly. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ken would be uh, puffing smoke all over the place. What did he, I mean, we'll see a clip, we've got lots of clips to show you guys at home. Um, we're going to show one with him with Hattie Jakes in Carry On Camping, I think it was. Um, why, was he, why did he look down his nose, his aquiline nose, um, at, at his parts in the carry-on films? Because he wasn't happy, was he, with, with the reputation that had given him? Well, I'm sitting next to the expert here, yeah, but I think well. he felt his life had gone off course, didn't he, really? Is he got it? trapped into that world, which the theatre was his real love, wasn't he? He started out as a, as a serious actor in rep, and in fact, uh, a lot of people don't know that he understudied all, um, Richard Burton, Mm -hmm. in The Seagull at mm -hmm. Swansea Rep in 1950 <laughs> and did a lot of uh, Shaw and in fact his first big break was playing in St Joan which he played in the West End and it was then that he was spotted by a BBC producer and put into Hancock <laughs> which then led on to review and all the um, frivolous, off, off what you call the frivolous Well, I was actually quite intrigued to learn that he uh, he worked with Tony Hancock um, and Hancock's half hour. Because Han Hancock dropped him, Hancock didn't, didn't yeah. like him very much, did he? He, he? Didn't he think he wasn't really much good? Well, he had such uh, amazing presence Kenneth coming on yeah. as those characters I think mm. probably Tony thought this is a bit too strong for ah, support the old threat in the cast yeah okay well let's let's have a look at him in um, in carry on camping for once we're not going to show the famous clip of Barbara Windsor losing her <laughs> thing. Um, and this is him with a, in a great scene with Hattie matron I am aware that a man has his uncontrollable urges from time to time. Oh, only at Christmas and bank holidays. I should really clothes. feel very flattered that you would want to release them on me. Oh, but I don't, Matron, I assure you. Oh, I realise, of course, it was the sight of me in the shower that aroused your slumbering manhood. Oh, but it wasn't slumbering. It was only half No, half. please don't say any more. Just be patient with me. Remember, I 
am inexperienced in such things. Just don't rush me. I think you'll find it's worth waiting for. Yeah, so it's Christmas, but you won't find me stuffing your tag. The thing is, <laughs> we, all, we all figured he was gay. I mean, you know, and yet he was totally private about that. Did he ever talk to his... his Not to me, I can tell you. But, of course, those were a terrible era. David and I were talking earlier. Uh, you know, they were haunted, hunted. Uh, men, a lot of performers. You'd go to prison to years yeah. ago, yeah. so mm. th nobody was coming out in, th in that era. You couldn't, even if you wanted to. I mean, nowadays the problem is keeping people in the closet, isn't it? I mean, everybody's <laughs> coming out. I still can't get over Michael Barrymore. <laughs> Who else? Who else? <laughs> <laughs> Gary Bushell, the Pope? <laughs> Possibly either. Well, no, look, he was very, he, he I mean, the thing is, you know, he, he, he had a big thing about it in his own head, didn't he? He couldn't bear and, to talk about And yet he, makes, he it. made references to it. I mean, we've got a clip here from that classic, An Audience With. Yes. One of the first uh, An Audience With, and it was all with, with Kenneth Williams. Were you in the audience for that one? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and here he is basically hinting pretty strongly, I think, yeah. as to his tendencies. We were all army, but Sam, we were supposed to entertain. And the OC lined us up and said, Now, because you're entertainers, I understand they had to all act, that's fine, but I, I want you to go about behaving like soldiers. I will not have a lot of this effeminacy and mincing about. <laughs> <laughs> and you could hear in the back row, get the madam, you're quiet. <laughs> And there was all this anger about any kind of effeminacy. And our opening number in the review was, we all had to come on, you see, singing, we are boys of the service, we're at your service, entertaining you. One of those sort of openings, you see. <laughs> and he watched this, and oh, dreadful, dread, boys of the service, dreadful, it's too effeminate. And all those sibilants, boys of the service, terrible. No, let's make it men. <laughs> men of the service. I'll go back off and come on again and sing. Men. So we all came back, and we're men of the service. <laughs> God, wasn't Brilliant. that? Yeah, all those story. faces in the audience. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's just yeah, looking yeah. so young. 1982, I think that was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The yeah. voice, though, the oh, modulation. Yeah. The, the modulation, absolutely. Which he does brilliantly. I'm yeah. plugging you again, David. But no, but it's true. Uh, that I think the problem was that by the end, he realised that that was all he had left. Mm. But he would never get any more dramatic parts because he talked himself out of them by being too funny. Well, he, he took a lot of it out on his poor old mum, who we saw every day, and uh, he had tea with her every night, didn't he? Um, he? Probably the person he was closest to. Uh, and, and this clip from, from tonight's drama doc. Oh, do, do you not want to see it, Ginny? Well, I, think we've, we've, I don't think we've got have we, have time. We got, have Shall we, we look time? away now? <laughs> 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 uh, we had got time, but now we haven't. <laughs> well, I'm sure it's going to be very good. It's going to be good, yeah. It's going to be very good. I'll tell you, Michael Sheen is just brilliant, isn't he? You see him as Tony Blair? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 it's true. No, no, he is. He's brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely superb. <laughs> and do you think Kenneth would have hated it? I don't know what he would have thought about it. I think he probably would have thought it, he would have felt a bit exposed, I should imagine, because it does. We've seen little bits. Yeah, they, showed us yeah. some, they showed us some clips in the green room, and it, uh, it's quite full on. I mean, mm. you see some quite. Literally. Say the, yes. Well, there's a lot of full onanism, on. isn't there? Yeah. What? It's onanism. Excuse onanism. my words carefully at this time Ooh. of night. Yeah, which yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I haven't seen those bits, but I heard a, a review of it on Saturday saying it was a bit full on, you know? Well, I'm not sure he would have been happy with that. Well, it's all, but then again, it's all in the diaries as well, which were published. That's true. That is true. That is true. Been, that is true. And that's really what the, this drama is based on very much, <laughs> is the diaries. Give you time one quick just a minute story. He was the most well read of men, as you know, and articulate. And uh, at one point he said, oh, what did Hamlet say? Oh, that this too solid flesh would melt. And I pressed my buzzer, uh, interruption. What? I said, uh, lack of repetition, it's too, too solid flesh. <laughs> oh. oh. Did I get the death ray? <laughs> wow. But he it's could do cracker. rage. I was early in the show in those mm. days. I was quite alarmed by, where do they find these buffoons, he shouted at yeah. me. Yeah. And then it was lovely after the show. Yeah. We're yeah. Having a drink. He yeah. could do rage brilliantly. Yeah. You really yeah. thought you'd upset him. Yeah. yeah, he was like a coiled spring, wasn't he, ready yeah. to go off at a town. I once heard him cop copying um, Kenneth Connor's uh, take on, on a West Side Story song. He said, all at once am I seven inches high. I'm the dwarf <laughs> on the street where you live. <laughs> <laughs> I heard him sing that in his dressing we, room. Anyway, Fantabulosa is on tonight at 9pm oh, on BBC Ray 4. Thank you, and that's it for tonight. Tomorrow we're on at 5.15 because the Cheltenham races. See you at quarter past five. And thank Bye. you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.